in this chapter we will talk about uh, Tandrex uh, that uh, in our classification is a special variety of uh, uh, rhyolit rhyolitic jasper we are in the group of uh, volcanic jasper uh, that uh, are the result of alteration of volcanic rock and especially of the glass of the volcanic rock so this is uh, a, ki a kind of geologi geological sketch the most common place where volcanic jasper are found is uh, a rhyolitic caldera complex uh, that is a very big volcanic complex with caldera um, caldera formation that are the result of very big rhyolitic eruption and this uh, volcanic field are characterized by a very big uh, magma chamber under it under the volcano and a lot of heat many fumarol and a big uh, 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 heat gradient so there is the possibility to have a circulation of uh, hydrothermal water in big quantity and this water is uh, responsible to put in circulation a lot of silica okay the silica mm, is uh, most is in form of glass that is unstable and uh, is transformed in our jasper in opal and then in jasper um, we just see two uh, group of jasper that are a result of uh, alteration of tuff and rhyolitic jasper that are mostly uh, alteration of uh, rhyolitic volcanic body the uh, thunder egg are a, a kind of variety of rhyolitic jasper that have the same origin as the vitrification of uh, uh, glassy uh, lava the vitrification of uh, obsidians but in form of nodded so this is the scan of uh, rhyolitic jasper we see in the last uh, uh, chapter so the main mm, group is made of rhyolitic jasper that is uh, spherulitic inside uh, a jasper uh, of many colors and uh, in particular uh, orbicular jasper that are uh, a small group of very silicified uh, uh, rhyolitic uh, jasper and mm, thunder egg are the, the same but uh, formed in, in a more tough uh, uh, mostly in tough or uh, well the tough but not really in obsidian like this group okay um, we have the starting of uh, spherulite uh, spherulite grow um, the spherulite can grow in um, lava in obsidian as is the case uh, in, uh, of the this uh, rainfor rainforest jasper from australia and uh, uh, we can see the uh, flow banding of the original obsidian and uh, we can see that uh, the small spherulite can have a small fracture inside filled with chalcedony exactly with the same as chalcedony but it cannot grow because it is inside of at uh, strong uh, rock hard rock so there is uh, an impediment of growth otherwise if, if we are in tough the spherulite can aggregate together stick together and co for coalescence make a big nodule and the, this big nodule uh, formed mm, starting from one small uh, spherulite uh, wi with one small uh, fracture that grow 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 until we can have uh, thunder egg of few meters so this is the scale of these two samples in this case we have spherulite of one two centimeter can be three four five centimeter thunder egg are usually between 5 and 10 15 centimeters but can reach 2 3 meter of diameter okay in the same deposit we can have both tundra and the rhyolitic jasper so mm, this is a proof that the process is exactly the same this is a kind of tundra found in, in a deposit in washington state and mm, this is in a in a tough but we can find inside the tough some lava block uh, it's not uh, unusual to find obsidian block in, in pumi stuff and so this is probably was a big block of uh, of lava inside the tuff 
Um, this is one nice piece of the group of uh, Tandrek uh, formed inside the lava rock. So the Tandrek are inhibited, and uh, we really have a rhyolitic uh, jasper, but with fracture inside the spherulite. This is an another example of a similar uh, material from Nevada, but this in, in this case the, uh, the filling of the fracture is uh, consistent of opal, blue opal. Okay, this is a typical thunder egg. So we can see the, the fracture filling, this in this case is a nugget, and this is the real nodule with uh, jasper uh, material, and this consistent of many, many um, spherulite that are sticked together and juxtaposed. So uh, we can see here the structure, and we can see on the surface the, the shape of every uh, spherulite. But not in every deposit we can see as good this internal structure. Okay, the filling of the fracture is another another process. We, it's not interesting here, so we can fill uh, the fracture with uh, agate, banded and horizontal layered, with jasper or with topal. And also we can find uh, thunder with empty uh, fracture. So this is an another problem and we will discuss this in another context. So this is the typical jasper. Uh, that uh, the, that, uh, that represent uh, the, the real nodule of the tandrek. In this case, the fracture is empty, and we can see many many uh, spherulite. Um, this the bigger spherulite are near the fracture, where more water can enter, more solution can uh, make the alkali silica reaction and dissolve the glass and make mm, grow the spherulite and spherulite are smaller smaller mm, toward the the bore of the nodule so mm, these are um, spherulite that are too far from from the fracture to be interested uh, by alkali silica reaction so more uh, near to the fracture more water more reaction more gel, more solution, and more production of gel. This is another sample. It is possible to see that the internal structure. This is uh, another uh, white piece spring from Prineville, and it's made of many spherulite. In this case, we can see that the the jasper uh, don't fill completely the fracture and also some mm, spherulite have its own fracture uh, filled with its own jasper so mm, the coalescence is late uh, when many spherulite have uh, one fracture just formed inside this is another framework material from arizona the mushroom jasper this is uh, a nodule and this useful to make very nice cavation okay what is um, the step that arrived to the formation of tundra mm, the first step is the dissolution of the glass so it's the same process we see in rhyolitic jasper mm, we have uh, an oxygen that uh, start to have um, to suffer the alkali silica reaction because uh, um, in in alkali condition and with the, the right pH uh, the obsidian is a glass that is unstable so uh, the reaction with the uh, presence of water so in the wet uh, season uh, produce uh, in this case a kind of dendritic dissolution in this case a kind of spherulitic uh, of dissolution so uh, in, in both cases, the dissolution starts from a point where mm, there was probably a small phenocryst of uh, feldspar inside the, the obsidian. That is, is one mm, common kind uh, of 
phenocryst inside obsidian. So very, very, very sm small uh, crystals that give the first alkali input to the reaction. So in this case, we have an obsidian and a, a jasper with similar structure. And this, this is a proof that mm, this kind of jasper mm, are originated from a, a kind of obsidian with similar structure. So this is also uh, an obsidian, and this is the corresponding jasper. OK. Uh, the second step is uh, the growth of the spherulite. The spherulite, we, we can see mm, two kinds of shape. The classical snowflake obsidian mm, give uh, jasper the, of the type of rainforest jasper with indent uh, around the, the board that uh, is uh, the, the gel of silica that fill the fissure in the lamination of the obsidian. So th this is the point where the alkali silica reaction can enter between the lamina, the, the where there is a small space, small porosity where uh, water can enter. So in this case, mm, the spherulite is made of crystallite. But there is also a kind of spherulite made of uh, 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 fibrous feldspar. And this is the case of Pinux obsidian and many uh, jasper uh, with rose eye mm, pattern that uh, is uh, fibrous. So uh, this is the growing of, of the spherulite that is when, when the alkali silica reaction, the, produc the, produc the product of the alkali silica reaction, that is a colloidal solution. Mm, polymerize and uh, mm, become dry. So in this case, mm, it transforms in a plastic material in this kind of opal and then transform in jasper. So in in this moment is when the fracture starts to to become because during the the dry uh, the fracture. Uh, appear because of the loss of volume. Okay, the, the last step is uh, the opening of the fracture. So when we are in a, an obsidian, uh, we can have a spherulitic obsidian like this one or a jasper in, in a second step, but uh, the uh, spherulite cannot grow because uh, the rock around is hard. So the growing is stopped. The, the fracture cannot cannot migrate. In, a, in, a, in the other case, when the the spherulite grow inside the tooth, a tuff, the fracture can uh, uh, migrate out of the the first spherulite and interest more and more spherulite, more space. So more the fracture is big, more water is drained, more the alkali solution, the alkali silica solution is strong and more mm, colloidal solution is produced. So mm, more mm, the, the bunch of alkali silica, uh, of uh, a colloidal solution is big and interests more space inside the tuff and interests more spherulite. And this is a way to grow. So more big the fracture, more water, more water more more uh, colloidal solution, more colloidal solution, mm, more uh, loss of volume when dry, so more long diffractor. So the the proce process is self feeding. Okay, so this is the resume. Is uh, this phase is the part of the, the vitrification of the rock that is the same process that we see for a uh, rhyolithic jasper. It, it is uh, the glass dissolution, the, the growth of spherulite, and the, the beginning of the fracture. Then, when we are in, in a tuff, we have coalescence of uh, many spherulite with the migration of the fracture. So, the migration of the fracture is the, the way that the nodule grow. And the typical uh, shape of 
of the fracture is parallel to the uh, stratification of the tuff and uh, mm, so it's just one fracture we can have mm, two mm, fracture near one near to the other and in the second step we can have a perpendicular fracture so this is a, a famous deposit the Willow Creek Jasper mine in Idaho where uh, the Jasper is a filling of a very big tundering of few meters diameter so now we we look at the at the fracture you know, what is the pattern of the fractures there is different pattern mm. there is typical pattern made of radial uh, radial pattern and concentric fracture but uh, there is two different kind of radial pattern so the more typical is radial uh, orientate that means that there is one more important fracture uh, usually parallel to the tough lamination that is more or less horizontal and with a mm, more perpendicular um, another fracture perpendicular to the first one that is uh, more late and this is a typical case of uh, spherulitic coalitions and with uh, the kind of spherulites that have opal and crystallite in the case of uh, fibrous alkali feldspar um, the the spherulite is fibrous so it is possible to have um, a fracture that is not orientated so it's star shaped and uh, it uh, uh, the divide the nodule in cone that have uh, a con concentric structure and uh, each cone is fibrous but the same process of uh, uh, fibrous uh, feldspar can mm, be uh, structured in uh, concentric uh, shells and in this case the concentric shell of fibrous uh, crystals can uh, produce concentric fracture la as in this case so the the kind of um, fibrous uh, spherulite produce these two kind of, um, of fracture pattern and this is the more common um, crystallite spherulite pattern so this and this that are more similar are really two different processes Okay, this is few example for demonstrate the evolution of a uh, natural uh, fracture. This is the more simple fracture, just one fracture can be uh, segmented in two fracture, parallel fracture, and then in the, in the next step uh, can be a perpendicular fracture. So not always the uh, coalescence of spherulite is so easy to to see, but in 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 any case must to be there this is the typical star pattern uh, with fibrous structure and uh, with a concentric mm, cone to uh, looking toward the center of the the original no nodule so in this case we cannot see the coalitions of the spherulite because the crystallization of the fibrous um, eras Eras the the original structure of the spherulite, but in any case there is some uh, in some corner we can see some different uh, cone that are some different spherulite. In any case, the spherulite start to, to become start from small spherulite and, and grow by coalescence to always. L the fact that the, this fiber is so long is just a secondary crystallization so this is another mm, kind of fibrous tanderic this is from Queensland very nice and this is uh, from Laguna is a double tanderic with a concentric concentric uh, fracture partner pattern and this is the Dagway geode from Utah 
and this is a typical deposit with the concentric fracture and in this case the filling is is just a small line of calcedony so usually they are they, they are empty for this reason they are called geode in not standard but uh, they are really some kind of standard and uh, typically the concentric fracture but the concentric fracture is not only typical of a deposit but can be mixed with ad other kinds of fractures so in this case for example is the famous Becker Ranch Standard deposit in, in New Mexico uh, you can find a different level in the mine uh, the normal um, Standard with coalescence of spherulite or concentric part pattern for a fibrous uh, uh, sphero spherulite. This is just because uh, the same, uh, this, uh, the, the one o one single deposit can interest a different bed um, of volcanic rock with some different composition. And this is, for example. Uh, few examples of uh, the uh, uh, presence of different kind of fracture inside the same deposit in this nodule for example there is coalescence of two three nodules one with typical concentric pattern and another with typical star pattern this also have a beginning with star pattern and then a, a concentric fracture in the second step so this there is possibility to have many many uh, association of different kind of fractures this is a famous jasper from mexico mariposa jasper so it is butterfly jasper and they have many colors fibrous uh, spherulite of big size this is um, five six centimeter diameter this is another very big thunder from arper oregon and we can see at the beginning uh, a star-shaped fracture and then uh, a shell in, in the outer shell with different uh, pattern of fracturation it's an another different kind of standard from Yakutia okay in many cases uh, the uh, evolution of the shape of the fracture can be more, compli more complex and the uh, the shell don't show so ev evidently the coalitions uh, of spherulite because some material that is uh, full of phenocryst like in this case um, uh, if not an evolution so simple so there is uh, some also some secondary process or the alkali silica re reaction is not so homogeneous or simply is not so evident but uh, the coalition is there I, it's just question of look for the right specimen and find the right uh, piece uh, where this pattern is possible to see this is another thunder from Bruno Jasper and in also in this case it's difficult to understand to see the spherulite but I, we, you can see the original stratification the the tuff is full of phenocryst and there is some spherulitic structure in some place also this uh, very beautiful bruno nodule this is a very famous uh, novicoshal tandrek from poland with uh, fine banding and also in this case it's quite difficult to realize the the spherulitic composition and this is typical uh, of deposit where there is a lot of phenocryst in tuff An another thunder from germany Sant Gigi. Mm, there is the po possibility that few nodules are very near together and uh, when a fracture um, uh, joint another fracture so when the alkali silica reaction can um, interest uh, two mm, two nodules so the water that fill one fracture can move from one to the other 
So this is the moment when the two nodules stick, to to stick together. So it's the fracture that drain the water that is responsible that two nodules stick together. If the fracture are separated, the nodule can touch together but never are uh, coalesced, never are sticked together. So this is a, a situation where three nodules with concentric bandit are uh, sticked together by the migration of the fracture. This is another case when three small fractures are uh, connected together and make a, a nodule that is not more round but have an oval shape but was really mm, three nodules that are fused together. Okay, some, some thunder egg, uh, are very famous for its uh, inclusion. Uh, usually thunder egg is a kind of stone very cheap for collection and uh, uh, it is possible to make a, a very important collection with thousand of pieces um, with, without spending a lot of money from every deposit of uh, different color a different uh, character but a few of them are very expensive like this one Pride de Plume from Oregon is one of the more expensive piece for the collector of this kind of stuff and is very beautiful inclusion with colored plume. A another kind of inclusion very interesting is this uh, Sargenite from Blackrock Thunderick and is uh, quite uh, rare to find so nice Sargenite. Well, no, the, fil the filling of the Thunderick uh, in, in some case can be opal and uh, some deposits are, are um, digged for opal. This is the Hawaii blue opal that is a uh, thunder egg filling. Also, not so far, there is uh, in, in Opal Butte a uh, very big uh, mm, thunder egg with mm, filling of crystal opal with very high quality. But also the Ethiopian opal that is a very recent found from Africa, Ethiopian opal, that is a very high quality precious opal, is found inside a, a small thunder egg with exactly the same structure of a thunder egg with chalcedony and daggett. Mm, this is um, a thunder egg where it is possible to mm, realize that the cavity is too big for uh, this uh, little jasper. So uh, we see the fibrous uh, spherulite that have the, the top of the conic shape that are uh, reabsorbed. Y you can see here all the, the points are uh, reabsorbed. So I it is possible that the jasper that fill the cavity um, is um, um, is reabsorbed and uh, put in solution by a change of pH of the water. So um, uh, you can uh, make a cavity that is bigger that than expected. So in this case it is possible to realize that the cavity is too big for this, this little quantity of jasper of the, of the shell. So this is the, the process that is responsible of the formation of the coconut geode. Coconut geode is a typical uh, round geode uh, found in Mexico, uh, mainly in Mexico, and uh, is filled of uh, amethyst or quartz or different kind of agate and jasper. And this uh, deposit mm, can show uh, some nodule that clearly demonstrate uh, its origin as tandreg. This is the typical tandreg with not so clear uh, spherulitic uh, coalescence uh, and uh, a typical uh, star-shaped uh, fracture. But uh, in the reabsorption, dissolution and uh, uh, disappearing of this jasper can create a, a, an empty cavity of spherical shape. So this is the cavity, the, this is the typical geode and uh, nothing remain of the original jasper and this is a very common very popular 
kind of uh, of uh, tanderek of geode that have nothing to do with uh, Brazilian geode that, that grow in lava and they have very different shape depending on the, on the shape of of the cavity of the lava this uh, this geode are all of the same size all round uh, exactly as uh, is the thunder uh, formation because depend of the growing of the spherulite but in the second stage mm, they uh, disappear they they lose their jasper and they leave just the cavity that is in secondary uh, a secondary moment uh, filled with any kind of stuff. This is a nice example of a double, of a double uh, nodule. That is something that is possible to find also in Tanderek, but not in, in Brazilian geode. So this is uh, the, the very typical uh, coconut geode that we we are used to see broke at the, the mineral show, and is a different kind of a particular kind of thundering.